Hello and welcome to Higher Automation, a podcast brought to you by High Robotics. I'm your host, Michelle Dawn Mooney. And today we're talking about flexibility in automation, a blueprint for operational resilience, how to leverage adaptable automation for competitive advantage and long-term success. So what does flexibility mean in the context of warehouse automation? And why is it so crucial for operational success? Today, we'll dig into the significance of flexible automation in modern warehousing and fulfillment operations. Flexibility isn't just a buzzword. It's the cornerstone of operational success and business adaptability in an ever-changing marketplace. We'll also explore how flexible automation Automated Storage and Retrieval Systems, or ASRS, enable companies to navigate shifting demands and market dynamics with ease. Joining us are automation experts from Zion Solutions Group, Jim Shaw, President and Co-Founder, and Jordan Frank, EVP and Co-Founder, along with Matt Kelly, Director of Strategic Partnerships and Commercial Development at High Robotics USA. Thank you all for being with me today. Thanks for having us. Looking forward to getting into the conversation. So before we do that, can I ask you if you can give me a brief bio, starting with you, Jim? Yeah, glad to do it. So first of all, thank you, Hi, for having us. We're glad to be on the podcast. Uh, This is all I've ever done. So I've been in the industry for 25 plus years. Uh, I live in a small community in Hodgeville, Kentucky, which is really in central Kentucky. Uh, Abraham Lincoln's born about two miles from where I'm sitting right now, and I'm a dad of four and uh, an industrial engineer. And as you said, my, my real job title is I'm the president and co-founder of Zion Solutions Group. And just glad to be here. Thanks for having us. What about you, Jordan? Yeah, like Jimmy said, glad to be here and talk more about flexibility in the warehouse, um, especially with a, a strategic partner like High Robotics. So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my, my, me, myself, I'm our EVP of Sales and Solutions um, and one of the co-founders of Zion Solutions Group. My primary role is focusing on customer problems and solving the complex, breaking it down to be simple, and leveraging the different partners and technologies that we have at our disposal. I've, I've spent about 10 years in the industry, the bulk of that focused on robotics, um, but also all of the traditional things that go around those robotics. So I um, really enjoy getting in, getting our feet wet, understanding the data, and putting together a solution. So once again, thanks for having us. Glad to be here. And last but not least, Matt. Yeah, Matt Kelly out of Atlanta, Georgia, where our uh, new North American headquarters has just moved to. Um, I've been in the industry just under 10 years. I started selling uh, packaging materials door to door to warehouses and distribution centers, but I saw that the real value and the real excitement uh, was in the automation side. So I, I sold a lot of end of line automation and then got into the AMR robotic space. So for the last six years, I've been focused uh, primarily on goods to person technology with the last three years being at, uh, at auto store supporting their partner network. And my focus at high is, is really to enable our partners uh, to design, to simulate, to sell, implement, and of course, to service and support our technology really uh, as a piece of a broader solution that integrators like Zion uh, focus on. So excited to get into this conversation now. So let's start off with painting a picture of flexible goods to person automation in a modern fulfillment center. What does that look like? Yeah, I think there's I think there's multiple definitions of what goods to person is. So for today's context, let's talk about goods to person as 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 it exists in high and how high hits the market. So um, I think goods to person is an evolution on shuttle systems and an ASRS that's been around and been in the industry for a long time. And I, I think what's changed is the flexibility is there's really three components of a goods to person system. There's the robotics that bring um, the products to a person to pick. I mean, at its premise, that's what it is. There's the storage or the racking structure that the uh, the product sits in. And then there's, what do you put in the actual storage? Is it in a tote? Is it in a uh, shippable container? Is it in how it was received? So um, the flexibility to me of, of, again, I'm gonna focus on Hive. What it is, is there, it's a more flexible storage system, meaning that you've got a racking structure that can go up. Um, it doesn't require the floor to be as exact. It still requires a flat floor, but it doesn't require as exact. Um, it's not as involved of an engineered racking system as traditional ASRS are. So anybody in the industry would know that. Uh, and then the flexibility is you can add in a traditional shuttle system, you've got a fixed amount of, of machines or robots that shuttles that are in the system. Versus in high, you you really put in the machines that require the throughput. 
And if you need more throughput, you have more machines, you have more AMRs. Um, if you need less, then you can get by with less. And then ultimately where it comes to is I think you have more flexibility in the design of how it comes out and is presented to the humans and that you can have a very simplistic workstation to where you come in and you're picking and you're putting to a batch or putting to an order, um, or you can have a more rigid one where you come out. And one of the things we really love about high is the ability to take it out of the system. There's a lot of goods to person systems that you can't exit the system, meaning the tote cannot leave the system. But for high, that if you can design it, you can bring this, the tote out of the system and then you could go downstream and do a, a different process, a different value add service. Um, you can consolidate an order, et cetera. So I think today probably rambled a little bit, but today's goods to person systems are way more flexible in terms of how they're actually built and then ultimately how you can design them as a solution to benefit customers. Yeah. And I want to follow up with that because, I mean, obviously there's a lot of structure that you need in any business, but, you know, the term flexibility is so important. There's a lot of fluidity that is needed sometimes because things are ever changing. So Matt, I'm going to pose this to you. How exactly does flexible technology enable businesses to adapt to changing demands and market dynamics effectively? Yeah, I think the simplest answer is it really de-risks a business's decision to make this kind of investment. Um, you know, when you're looking to spend tens of millions of dollars on an automation solution, you have to know and have some level of foresight that that automation is going to continue to support the business over the long term. Um, you know, companies are always wondering, is, are, are we going to continue to grow? Are we going to decline in sales? Is our SKU set going to change? And whatever decision we make today, is that still going to be the right decision five, 10 years into the future? And I think, you know, commercially, that's a, a big benefit to the high system is that ability to flex and add robots, add racking, um, add workstations and change the way the workstations are set up to accommodate the changes in the business. I can't tell you how many decisions get stalled just by that kind of lockup and uncertainty that companies inevitably face day to day, not knowing where their business is going to go in the future. So Jordan, can you share examples of how businesses have leveraged flexible goods to person automation or ASRS to stay ahead? Yeah, I think Matt really hit on it well there. I think one of the biggest things that we do um, is let, let me back up a little bit first. So when we do paint a picture, I think it's important to point out that we, we really work within the distribution centers. Within, within the distribution centers, the most amount of focus from the technology is on the pick. Um, you know, there's, there's automation, Matt mentioned earlier on the packaging and end of line packaging. There's some inbound things, but really what we find is that picking is one of the largest focus in the industry right now and for good reason. And one of the reasons it is a good reason is because when you deal with e-commerce, you deal with 3PL, customers, the desire and need to grow rapidly over a short period of time is real. So if you think about when you're getting ready for Christmas and you got those Black Friday, and those Cyber Monday sales, and all of a sudden everybody across the world is ordering all this product at once, well, historically, those companies would have to go out and find that labor and bring them into their process and train them of how the system works. So if you had a traditional system that was a RF device or back in the day paper-based, and you had a 5X peak or 7X peak during that November timeframe, well, what people don't understand is that these guys, these companies are bringing those people in a month, two months or more before Black Friday and Cyber Monday purely so they can train them. So now you've got these people on your staff, you're gonna be there for a month after Cyber Monday to get through all the orders and then they go away. But that's at a premium rate, it's hard to find that right labor so where people are really leveraging these systems is there's different flavors of this goods to person automation where during peak periods, maybe instead of bringing in people, I can potentially bring in some additional robots to help. Um, that's an example of a peak flexibility. Another opportunity is when you think through three PLs and, uh, and they want to run a multi-client facility, meaning it's not a singular client within their building. They actually have multiple different clients. Well, who wants to go out and create different process flows for every single client you bring in? Why can't I have one singular technology that I can use across multiple different channels or customers? So that's another area that we've seen people use these. Um, and lastly, once again, on the 3PL side, it allows you to really bring in additional customers in a quick amount of time, which is a competitive advantage because I can tell you, we consumers don't have patience to wait on orders to show up to our door anymore. Well, I can also tell you that 
customers out there, they don't have patience for a 3PL to go out for 18 months to create one of these solutions. So if they have an opportunity to say, hey, we can take you in in six months, and they're just adding on to some of this technology, like a high system they've put in, and it, it gives them a competitive advantage over their potential competitors. And um, those are probably the three main ways that I see this technology being leveraged in a, in a flexible way. We've coined the phrase a few times, painting the picture, and that picture isn't necessarily perfect. <laughs> so we're here to talk about some solutions. So Matt, are there any challenges or obstacles that companies commonly face when they are striving to integrate flexibility into their automation processes? And then more importantly, how can they overcome them? Yeah, no, you you said it nicely there. Um, nothing is perfect, especially when you're looking at, uh, you know, an operation's data or their order profile. There's a lot of variables that, you know, a partner like Zion has to really accommodate and understand to make our technology the right fit in that operation. And those unknowns can be a challenge to, to design uh, effectively and to design with uh, the right forecast as far as how that business is going to evolve. Um, but then I think also, you know, we're, we're inserting this technology often in live operations into a brownfield and, you know, implementing something that's going to potentially disturb an existing operation can be a big challenge. And I think, too, you know, you have to be able to advise and coach the end client on what to expect, not just in the implementation and go live process, which can be a lot, uh, a, a lot of challenges can, can come during that period of time, but also to, um, be very transparent on what the long-term cost of these things are going to be. I can't tell you how many uh, systems I implemented at past companies where, you know, it wasn't as clear up front what things were going to cost as changes occurred in the implementation go live process. And I think we have enough experience with our partners and Zion certainly has enough experience implementing not only high systems, but, uh, but other technologies that that level of partnership with the end client um, is very critical to not, you know, really negatively affecting those existing operations. So Jim and Jordan, this last question for you, how do you foresee the future evolution of flexibility and innovation within goods to person automation? And then what advice would you give to businesses looking to enhance flexibility and adaptability within their fulfillment operation? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to back up a little bit. I probably painted more of a structural picture of what flexible um, goods to person system is and why should customers choose it? So what we, Jordan did a good job, I think, of, of what problem does goods to person solve? And it's solving a picking problem. It's solving a density problem. Uh, it's solving a high skew. There, there's certainly different data that, that leads to when would you use goods to person? When would you not use goods to person? And Matt, I think you hit on an important thing as I, as I head into question, this question is what challenges are there? So the value to me of an integrator is the fact that we're, we're really agnostic to what products we ultimately put into our solutions. We have strategic partners. Uh, we go out and, and our methodology at Zion has been to, to pick technologies that we feel like we are good at creating solutions that solve problems for our customers in the field. And how happens to be one of those. And when we see a customer that's got a, a, a large SKU variety, of the right size SKUs. They're wanting to maximize their storage density. They're wanting to maximize their, their, their output and their throughput. And then they want something that, that can be flexible. We toss around flexibility, but automation at its heart is not flexible. Automation is more fixed. But I tell you what, what high has is they have the ability to go in and again, back to the traditional multi-shuttle shuttle systems, ASRS systems, is you had to almost get it right day one of what your profile needed to be, what your data needed to be, and then you're building this structure. I call it a dinosaur. You're bolting it down. Your ability, you can hit the throughputs that you built it for. Think of like a vehicle or a car. Like if the max speed a vehicle can run or drive is 100 miles an hour, that's how you had to design those systems. In today's world, the flexibility is and where an integrator comes in is we can ask the challenges of where do you think you are today? What problems are you having? Where do you think you'll be in the future? What are you trying to solve? We can do a phased approach with a system like High Robotics that they can grow into where they're at today. They can grow into a multi-client environment in the future because the software is super flexible as well. And just you can make it simpler. You can make it to where you can you can plug and play in different 
as long as the skew profiles and what throughputs you need match, you've got you've got a wide range of how you can use the product and the technology. So um, my advice to, to customers are spend the right amount of time with the right trusted advisors, whether it's directly with an OEM or whether it's through a systems integrator, is spend the right amount of time thinking through what you need, how you can be as flexible as possible, and then you got to commit to it. And then you, you've got you've got to really commit to it and understand the investment in the timelines and what you have to do on the operational end to make the the system and the solution successful. So Jordan, I rambled. I've been sitting. No, no. Too long. You I, go ahead. Add to it, brother. No, I think you had a lot of I think you had a lot of good points in there. And I think you towards the end there you mentioned the balance of storage and throughput, which historically has been a uh, preliminary qualifier for goods to person technology. Because if I have too much storage and not enough throughput. At the end of the day, it's not the cheapest storage in the world. If I have too much throughput and not enough storage, the system may not work great within that. But what's pretty neat about high, when we talk around flexibility, is you see some goods to person companies stick to a product and that's their product and it doesn't change. Other goods to person technologies go out and they develop a little bit of everything. What I think high has done that's really strategic and adds to the flexibility is I believe that this is Jordan's opinion that high saw an opportunity for. We want that balance to be a little bit looser than historical. What they did is they came out and said, well, hey, what's one problem we see? Well, sometimes in goods to person systems, you always hear about um, that unit's too big to go in there. It's too fast of a mover. I've got to have it somewhere else. Well, if you're doing that, you're creating inflexibility because now you've got a separate process where you have to consolidate orders. If I've got a fast pick area and a slow pick area, I got to get those orders together. So I think I saw those opportunities from a oversized items and from a fast moving items. And they came out and said, hey, we got a new system. It's called System 2. System 2 allows us to store oversized, the uglies. It allows us to store, I look at it, you can store some fast moving. So if I want a Gaylord worth of product versus having a tote, great, let's do it. Let's put in System 2. And then I think they looked at it further and said, hey, how do we get the storage density to match an auto store that Matt mentioned earlier where he, where he came from? Um, of just how do we how do we get that storage density? How do we treat those really slow moving SKUs? Well, hey, let's look at what they call System Three. So it allows you to use, um, in my opinion, a it's a it's a better, easier to deploy workstations so that you can easily add workstations as you need to as your pickers are growing. You can get denser. There's a lot of cool things, and and specifically where I see the industry going from flexibility is making it where I told you earlier they're focused on everyone's focused on the pick today. Well, how do I get that one inclusive engine that it's like from inbound to storage, to pick, to pack, to ship, there's flexibility along that whole process versus a singular process. So I think the industry is going to go there. I think they're going to look to solve the whole process more holistically. And then similar as Jimmy, in terms of the advice I'd give to businesses is Promat and Modex are great. They're awesome. But there is just a lot at those trade shows. There's just miles, it feels like, of robotics companies in as, as experts as we are, or at least we think we are in the field, there's plenty of people there that we don't know, that we haven't seen. So part of our job is saying, hey, what do you got? Let me learn more about it. We qualify that technology. We qualify that company. We say, are they going to be a long-term partner? Do they have a market or a product ready to deploy? Are they still in kind of a development stage? So we take all that time and effort, which believe me, you've seen the amount of people there. It's a lot of time and effort to understand who are the qualified partners? Who are the qualified businesses within this industry? So when you do work with a systems integrator and you have a partnership like you do with Zion and High, we're here to give you that unbiased opinion of, guys, here's what we see. You can come to it and say, what about this company? And we'll give you our thoughts and we'll be honest with it. We're not always going to tell you to go automate because it doesn't always make the most sense. So we're just here to try to, once again, I said at the start of this call, we try to make the complex simple. We try to do the same thing when it comes to what's real and what isn't from a robotics and, and business standpoint. Yeah, Jordan, you just hit on something huge. People ask us all the time, you know, what differentiates high? And, you know, you can go through all, all the different uh, reasons why people invest in our technology, the flexibility, core modules and our high pick robots, ability to handle different cases, different SKUs. Um, but to me, our differentiator is you guys as our partner and our partner network as a whole. That's the biggest validation that our technology is right, not just in a competitive engagement or a project that we're working on together, but the fact that it's part of your portfolio. And when you look at a, at a problem, at, at a customer's uh, situation, and you have determined that high robotics is the right pick engine, that's a huge deal for us. And it validates us. And I think it uh, puts a lot of 
trust and confidence in, uh, from the customer to you guys to move forward with us uh, as partners. And that's, to me, a, a big call out. Great conversation. And you know what? I don't know, Jim and Jordan, you make a good tag team. I'm going to call you like J squared, I think is, is your, new, <laughs> your new, if you take it out on the road. Um, of course, we're talking about an important topic here and, you know, flexibility in automation, the blueprint for operational resilience and how that flexibility is so necessary for things that are growing and changing. And we definitely discussed a lot of ways that you can do that here. Jim Shaw, president and co-founder of Zion Solutions Group, Jordan Frank, EVP and co-founder of Zion, Matt Kelly, Director of Strategic Partnerships and Commercial Development at High Robotics USA. Thank you all for being here today. Enjoy the conversation and appreciate your time today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you for listening and tuning in to Higher Automation, a podcast brought to you by High Robotics. Of course, you can visit High's website at highrobotics.com for more information there. We hope you will subscribe to this podcast if you'd like to hear more engaging conversations like the one you heard today. I'm your host, Michelle Dawn Mooney. Thanks again for joining us. We hope to connect with you on another podcast soon. Mm-hmm.